Um, me too. All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Wyatt Sharp Show. Joining me today to discuss how the Ford government should move forward with reopening schools here in the province of Ontario is uh, Merritt Style. She is the NDP MPP for Davenport, and that party's critic for education. And uh, Kate Graham, the Ontario Liberal Party candidate in London North Centre, and the co-chair for the Liberals 2022 uh, platform. So um, I'll start out with one thing that um, many MPPs were calling for throughout uh, the last school year was um, a cap on uh, class sizes. And obviously it's hard to say a month before, but um, we know because uh, with the COVID situation, things can obviously change very quickly. But um, based on concerns that you're hearing, Merritt, um, how should the Ford government address class sizes um, for September when they come out with a plan to reopen schools? Well, you're right. It's, 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 it's kind of late in the game, isn't it, Wyatt? I mean, one of the things that's unfortunate is that we don't have a plan yet um, that's been released. And so a lot of school boards across the province have had to really scramble to put together plans based on directions that they've been given by uh, by the government from back in 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 the fall of last year. And so we are really uh, it's it's kind of an unfair situation, frankly, for boards to be put in at this place. But at this point, but what we are seeing is consistently from the education and the public health experts uh, a continued desire to see uh, more space. Uh, between students in classrooms. And we know it's gonna be really critical to keeping our schools open next year. Um, why you know this all too well, uh, classrooms in Ontario have been close to in-person learning for 26 weeks. And that is the longest of any jurisdiction in Canada and close to some of the worst records in, in North America and the world. And so, you know, that's why this is so important is we've got to keep those class sizes smaller. Uh, can the government still do it? It's going to be a huge challenge, a huge challenge. But I think that is something that we need the government to continue to work toward. OK, and Kate, would you add anything on kind of the topic of addressing class sizes for uh, in September? Well, I think I mean, the Greens, the Liberals and the NDP have all called for class sizes. Uh, and these calls date back now over a year. Um, as has been already said, you know, this is really important to keeping uh, schools safe and to providing families with the kind of predictability that they need. Um, I'm a mom myself, and uh, it feels like the clock is ticking. Fall is very, very near, and it's enormously concerning that we don't have a plan and families don't have something they can rely on yet to know that classes will stay open. Um, to me, class sizes, as well as other things like uh, addressing sick days, like providing other supports in the classroom, thinking about things like ventilation. Uh, we, you know, it was one thing at the beginning of the pandemic when we didn't fully understand this. We're now well into this. The solutions have been articulated by experts over and over and over again. Uh, you are seeing multiple political parties calling for action. What we need now is for the government to take this seriously, to put kids at the center of their recovery, and to take the steps that are needed to make sure that September is safe. Okay, and so the Ontario Liberal Party came out with a plan for uh, $10 a day childcare. So if your party is elected, um, that is something that obviously your party would like to achieve. But how would you accomplish this? Because I think people are a little bit confused around the process of um, how it would work and how you would actually lower the cost from what they are now. And um, where, and another point that I think conservatives are trying to um, get on this policy is... Um, uh, where would the money come from? So if you want to speak a little bit to your uh, party's child care plan. Sure. Uh, well, the federal budget this year made an absolutely historic investment in child care, and they committed to $10 a day universal licensed child care across the country. Now, this only happens, it only happens if there is a provincial government who is willing to play ball. Uh, they have to sign something called a bilateral agreement with the federal government that allows those dollars to flow and to start building that system. So right after the federal budget came out, we wanted to be loud and clear to say that we, uh, if given the opportunity to lead Ontario, would be that partner with the federal government to bring universal $10 a day licensed child care to Ontario. So most of the funding is federal. Ontario's share would work out to be more than $3 billion a year. Again, that's money we're just leaving on the table if an agreement isn't signed. And we as a party also committed to putting in an additional $1 billion uh, provincially each year. And that would go towards things like uh, an ECE wage grid 
which we know is really important to retain workers to be able to provide those kinds of spaces. It would go to things like before and after school care and extending parental leave so that either parent, uh, a mom or a dad, or in, in other kinds of family scenarios, a parent uh, or caregiver is able to take a longer period of leave to stay home with a new child. So it would be mostly federal funds to your question about where does the money come from, but we are, it's so important to us and particularly right now as we recover out of the pandemic and we see the participation of women in the workforce at a you know 30 year low, uh, it's really important to, uh, to us, to tell Ontarians that we'd be prepared to invest in making that happen as well. Mary, can I comment on that? Do you mind if I comment on that? Yeah, sure, go ahead and then I will. Yeah, I mean, I think like we're all very excited about uh, the opportunity to finally have a na national child care plan. And it's something the NDP has been pushing for for, you know, yep. generations. Okay. <laughs> so, yep. you know, it's we're really happy to see it happen. And and, and, and Kate's right, we need to see uh, the provincial governments at all like buy in. And of course, we're very committed to that in the Ontario NDP. Um, but in terms of your question about how do you cover the costs, right, which I mean, we hear all the time, because we've been talking about this for, for years. And, and what I would say is, the cost is covered. If you look at how they did this in Quebec, the cost is covered by the, the by the boost to the economy of getting women in particular into the into the workforce. And, and that's where we see this pay off. And it really does pay off in the end. And the only other thing I would add is that the one thing our party really prioritizes in this plan is that all those dollars they go to non-profit, not-for-profit childcare. It's very important because we know that that's where we see the best outcomes. Okay, and Kate, I just wanna um, talk a little bit more about what you said. So you mentioned the federal budget plan um, as well. So. Is the plan of the federal, and I know you kind of commented on it, but is the uh, the ten dollar a day child care plan um, that the federal government came out with in budget twenty twenty one? Is it the same as your plan, and or would your plan look to implement further measures if they come into government? Because I think um, your your uh, party announced the plan, and then the federal government announced their plan. So is this something that you would work together with the federal government on? Yes, yeah, so uh, the only way this happens all across Canada is by finding collaborative relationships with the provinces. So our plan actually, uh, you follow politics very closely, so I'm, I'm hesitant to correct you, but it was actually just shortly after the federal budget came out that we put forward our plan to say, uh, we'd be very prepared to work together and make this work. Uh, what it looks like implementation wise is a little bit different in each province and territory, which makes good sense. It's sort of a different, uh, different community need, different mix of for-profit, non-profit, et cetera, in each province. And so our plan articulates how we could make that happen in Ontario and addresses some of the things that we know are current gaps in Ontario. I mentioned the wage grid, for example. We know that part of the problem is that there are many people who are trained as early childhood educators in Ontario that don't work in that field. And so uh, providing free tuition for more people to get into that field, committing to a wage grid, those are necessary things in an Ontario context to be able to make that federal vision happen. So it is a similar plan. Uh, it definitely holds a similar vision of that dream of a universal $10 a day licensed childcare system, certainly with a, a preference for nonprofit, but, uh, but commits to some of the things that we know are needed in Ontario if we're actually gonna be able to realize that dream. Okay, and Merritt, I want to ask you about um, the mental health aspect of not having schools open and not having any particular activities open. So um, obviously, if schools don't reopen, the mental ha health aspect of it will be very large. So do you think, based on the medical um, advice, that reopening schools should be um, a top priority? And how big is the mental health aspect of not reopening schools in your view? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, why well, it is, uh, it is an absolutely should be, I, I actually believe right now, this should be the number one priority of the, of the Ontario government, without question, um, because we have seen uh, the hit on uh, the mental health and emotional well-being of children and youth uh, across this province. Uh, I certainly have talked to thousands. I mean, like, I think thousands <laughs> of Ontario families over the last year and a half. And I, I will say just anecdotally, I don't think I know anyone who isn't looking at as a parent, and I'm a parent of, of a kid in, in, in public school still, um, I don't think anybody I know isn't looking for mental health support for their children. It is It has been uh, dramatic and devastating. And we know that the uh, medical professionals and hospitals across the province have, have called for the government to prioritize getting our kids back in school. But you know what's really critical and why I keep talking about those those investments and the ventilation and, and, and reversing the 800 million cuts and all of those things. Because if we don't, um, if we don't get this right, 
then we could end up closing again. And that, you know, that in and out of school closure reopening um, was, I think, also took an enormous toll on Ontario children and families. So it's got to be a priority. And I think combined with that, we and I've been talking to um, to a lot of the 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 people who sit on the science table, uh, who were part of the report that came out this week. We need to make sure that there are mental health professionals in our schools. Uh, we need to make sure that when students do return to school, that they have additional support in the classroom. And we need to ensure that we're adjusting the curriculum as well uh, to make sure it takes into account what the learning disruption that you guys have experienced means for Ontario children. So there's a lot of work to be done. And I guess that's why I've been so frustrated <laughs> over the last mm -hmm. few months, Wyatt. And I know a lot of families out there are too, and all the education workers, because we feel like this should be the absolute priority and the government should be moving heaven and earth uh, to get this done right now. Mm -hmm. You mentioned Meredith about the science advisory table um, and what they've put forward. Um, so I'll ask the same question now to both of you to wrap it up here. So um, what do you think should be, uh, rather the science advisory table has put forward what they think should be done for the month of September, but um, do you, they say that moving to online school um, should not be used as a public health measure to lower COVID cases and we kind of seen that um, with uh, the Ford government, they um, when COVID cases started to rise, they kind of um, they closed schools as uh, as what they called a public health measure. So, um, do you have confidence, Merritt? Uh, you can go first that uh, schools will uh, reopen in September. And what would you recommend to the Ford government? Um, and just what do you think about um, using um, closing schools as a public health measure? Well, look, I, I think that, you know, we heard um, Premier Ford say last year, early on, he said, you know, the priority has to be schools are the first to open and the last to close, right? Mm -hmm. And we heard that over and over and over again. But unfortunately, that's not what we saw happen in Ontario. And why, why did it work better in other provinces? Because the prioritization was different. And frankly, the investment and in action that was taken is diff was different. So um, I think the government has taken a bit of a wait and see approach. And I think that's been a huge mistake, but we have a chance to do it differently this time. So when schools reopen in September, I know, uh, I talk to a lot of boards every, every week and I know that they are doing everything they can to make sure that our community schools are gonna be as safe as possible for students returning. And the science table and the experts have laid out a plan. They've laid out their recommendations. Uh, we need a plan from the government. And, but along with words, we need action. We need them to reverse their 800 million in cuts that are planned for this year. We need to in, invest in all the things we've talked about here already. Um, we need to make sure we're using the latest science uh, to ensure that our schools have proper ventilation and that the air exchange is happening. And if we do all of those things, then I think the chances are we can keep kids in school in person. And we know that that is the priority for most Ontario families and for students. So, you know, let's get it done. I, I, I really feel like it's possible. I certainly wouldn't be talking about it every day if I didn't. And, but I am frustrated and I think the government needs to step up now. It's not too late, but the longer they wait, the more we're all gonna be scrambling and the more risk there is that we will end up having to close schools again and force kids back online. Kate, on the same topic of the science advisory tables, comments around reopening schools. Sure. Well, I, I think there's, uh, you know, they're not the only experts that have been really talking about the importance of returning kids to in-person learning. Uh, I teach at the university level myself. I've been teaching online for a year and a half now. And, you know, although I think a lot has been learned, there is no substitute for the kind of magic that you can create in a classroom together. And so we need to be, uh, as Marie said, moving heaven and earth to make that happen. Um, this is the reason that last year, and then again this year, the Ontario Liberal Party put out a costed plan in hopes that it will be uh, stolen. We've said, please take this. Uh, it includes costing to the board level of the kind of investment that would be needed to take uh, to make this happen. And we were just talking about mental health earlier. We talked about what it would cost to bring a thousand new mental health professionals into schools, uh, 375 million to hire 5,000 special education professionals and more. There are specific things that need to happen to be able to ensure that schools are safe and that parents and families can count on schools remaining open, but it will require an investment. And we gotta start being real with people about what that looks like and putting it into practice. 
it is July the 22nd. School is just around the corner. Uh, I think the big question on a lot of people's minds is we either prioritize kids and education in the recovery or we don't. And the current provincial government is answering no to that question. And we deserve, as a province, we deserve better. All right. Well, that was my final question. So, Kate and Merritt, thanks so much for joining me today. Thank you thanks very much, Merritt. Thank you.